Hey SB fam, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Bella the Steak and Butter Gal. I hope you all are having a fantastic day, staying meat-fueled and fat-fueled, and I wanna wish you all a happy, happy holiday and a happy new year. I hope plenty of good health, happiness, joy, and laughter come to you all in 2023. So since 2023 is literally around the corner, I thought I would film this video, have a nice casual sit down chat with you guys and share with you three things that I really wanna implement starting the new year. And I'll probably roll out these different goals for myself at different times. And you will see why, because I just don't think it's a good idea to do all three at once on the same day. There will probably be negative repercussions. I'll probably be suffering more than I have to. So two of the three goals that I set for myself are more of pushing it out of my life. So it's nothing new that I'll be implementing, rather I will be cutting it out of my daily routine and out of my diet. And the third thing is something really exciting. I honestly um, don't know how I feel about it yet, but I really want to push myself. I think it's really going to help me promote growth and it's gonna be difficult, but I really want to stick to it. Honestly, all three of these things are not easy, but I think me talking about it, sitting down and filming it, putting it out there to you guys to watch will definitely motivate me to stick to it, to keep my word and to update you guys on how I do. one and I'm going to start off with the most difficult most dreaded one and I'm definitely not looking forward to the beginning of this implementation at all but I'm biting my tongue and I'm doing it and that is cutting out the coffee I know I know it's about time I have been holding on to this last vice for so long it is definitely something that I've been protecting so very dearly just yesterday I actually put up quite a lot of polls up and questions in my Instagram stories just asking for people to step up and submit their experiences with cutting out coffee and I have to say the results were honestly 50 50 half of the people who submitted their experiences and results honestly saw no difference at all. No difference, no changes, no impact. But the other half though was what really intrigued me. I read and got so many fascinating updates and it covered all over the spectrum of health, mental health, mood, anxiety, sleep, uh, physical health, deeper healing, motivation, patience, irritability, all of these things were impacted after cutting out the coffee. So that alone really inspired me. And for me, when I hear success stories and positive victories and impacts, it definitely intrigues me the most. Like that's the most effective way to convince me to experiment or try anything new. I am honestly just so curious to see what would happen to my body, my mental health, my mood, um, all of it. And trust me, I will definitely be documenting every step of the way I actually do not know how I'm going to approach the actual cutting it out. Right now, I'm contemplating between two choices, either cutting it out completely cold turkey, so basically just stopping it altogether, just like that, or doing the gradual process of weaning off of the coffee. And I do have to shout out my coaches in the Steak and Butter Gang because they have taught me so much about coffee, the possible harmful effects of coffee, the best ways to cut out coffee, withdrawals, what to expect. So I'll definitely share with you guys what I learned from my coaches and shout out to my members in the Steak and Butter Gang who so openly share their progress. The victories that I've seen in the community are honestly so inspiring. So basically what I learned and observed about coffee is the following. 
Coffee is a stimulant. So your body's reaction to having coffee is just not a natural reaction. You're probably pushing your body beyond limits or beyond what it's comfortable with. Especially if you drink coffee first thing in the morning, it's really going to spike that cortisol. When your cortisol is spiked, your insulin also goes up as well as your blood sugar. This is a lot of stress on the adrenals. So you can see how that could affect hormone health, your mood, your overall energy throughout the day. That's also why a lot of people who are coffee addicts, they experience a lot of ups and downs downs, highs in energy and mood, and then crashes. Shout out to my coach, Coach Stephen Thomas, for teaching me that. And another angle to consider, since we're all carnivores here, or somewhat carnivore, uh, coffee comes from a plant. So when we are consuming a plant substance, a plant food, even as a drink, we are consuming a lot of toxins. Plants naturally will have defense mechanisms to protect itself. So we're also ingesting an active pesticide by drinking coffee. So naturally I can't help but wonder having all of these toxins every single day, even though I have one cup a day only, one cup of black coffee every single day, it really does add up. And I've been having one cup daily for the past three years now. So what exactly will happen when I cut out this last 1% of plant toxin? Maybe nothing will happen. We shall see. I'm open to that and I won't be disappointed. Honestly, I will be relieved because I possibly will just bring it back in. But maybe something really life-changing could happen too. Coffee prevents the body from healing properly after an intense workout. And even out of the context of working out, I really wonder, is coffee preventing my body from healing properly? Is it possibly even causing extra inflammation in my body? And one more angle that I'm really considering and will monitor is hunger and appetite. I really cannot wait to see how cutting out the coffee will affect my hunger signals, my overall appetite, how will my appetite be around my cycle? without coffee in my daily life? And will I be hungrier? Will I crave for different things on the carnivore diet? I'm honestly just getting excited talking about it. And I do have to shout out coach Raymond for this point because he frequently teaches hunger and appetite and the things that can affect it, suppress it, stimulate it in the steak and butter gang. These three angles truly convinced me to just bite my tongue and cut it out. So I have not yet decided on what type of approach I want to choose with cutting out the coffee. So this is where I would love all of your feedback and input, please do share with me your best tips and tricks, how you did it, and what benefits, impacts, or maybe none at all, you have felt after cutting out coffee. Second goal that I have set for myself, I really want to say goodbye to my sedentary habits. I have to say it's been getting more and more sedentary throughout this year, 2022. I honestly started off 2022, January, with so much daily movement. I think I set a goal for myself every single day, I will get steps in. I didn't put a number on it because I don't do well with numbers and hitting a certain number because then I get obsessive and I kind of push myself a little bit too hard just to reach that number goal. I just loved how I felt moving every single day intentionally and doing movement that I enjoyed. So I did a lot of walks with Steak and Butter Guy, my dogs, Steak and Butter Guy's mom. I did a lot of going to the dog part and playing with my dogs. It was literally a daily thing starting in January and then February and March kind of got a little bit less. This fall and winter, I have been pretty sedentary and I'm not very happy about that. Although when I am sedentary, I'm not just sitting around watching TV and doing nothing. I'm mostly sedentary because I'm in front of my laptop, editing these videos for you guys, filming interviews, hosting my meetings with the Steak and Butter Gang. So I have to say what really inspired me to set this goal for myself is my interview with Dr. Baker and Max's experience training with Dr. Sean Baker. So this is where I'm really gonna just spill out the whole goal. Not only do I want to say goodbye to these very bad sedentary habits, where I'm honestly sitting in front of a screen for like five to six hours on end, and it really does take a toll on your body. And for me specifically, I get some lower back discomfort. My legs feel a little bit stiff. And those habits are really not something I wanna carry over in 2023. That's why I'm saying out loud, I will, do daily intentional movement, and I will start resistance training. That's right, I will be strength training.
who have followed me for a long time know how again how resistant i am to exercising and going to the gym and that's because of my whole previous mindset around the gym and working out i actually had quite a bad relationship with the gym working out because i would push it so hard i would overwork in the gym and then i would come home and restrict count calories which then led to this whole cycle of binging and restricting overworking and starving and just wrecking my hormones feeling horrible not getting to my body composition goals so it's because i had that type of background and history with working out that i have this almost aversion to it but with that being said i'm now carnivore for pretty much four years now and i feel like I've done so much deep healing, nourishing, and satiating on the carnivore diet, eating the most amazing nutrient-dense foods, bringing back my cycle. I've had my cycle for almost four years now, every single month, healthy, normal, painless, and pleasant. And I feel like my body is finally in a place where I can reintroduce working out where I can reintroduce, you know, lifting weights, strength training, resistance training. And this is where I'm going to leave it up to my boyfriend, Steak and Butter Guy. I feel very inspired by his experience training with Sean Baker. And you guys can hear all about it in my recent interview with Dr. Baker that I just posted right before this video. The biggest benefits that I'm most looking forward to with working out is that endorphin rush. I see Steak and Butter Guy and how happy he is, how motivated and just on a high. He's literally on cloud nine every time he comes home from Sean's, every time he does a hard workout. And I'm honestly jealous of that because I love that feeling. It reminds me of what it feels like to perform a concert since I'm a pianist. It really reminds me of that high and endorphin rush you feel after performing a concert. Like, I want that. And if I could promote that and achieve that just by working out, I could probably feel that every single day if I wanted to. So am I gonna push myself to the level where Max pushes or where Sean pushes Max at in their training sessions? Absolutely not. I think that's not a smart way to start something new, especially something that I've such a bad history with. And I'm actually going to leave that in the hands of my boyfriend, Steak and Butter Guy, since he has a lot of experience with working out, but also because he is learning so much about effective strategies with working out, with strength training from Dr. Baker. So I'm super lucky to be learning through Max uh, from what he's learning from Dr. Baker. So if you want me to document my progress with working out again, uh, feel free to comment it down below and let me know. Speaking of Dr. Baker, he's actually going to be a guest speaker in my next 30-day carnivore challenge. And January 2023 is World Carnivore Month, which is why I'm inviting on a brilliant guest panel of speakers, Dr. Sean Baker, Dr. Mindy Pels, Dr. Robert Kiltz, Dr. Sabrina Solt, Dr. Rachel Brown, and Professor Bart Kay. We have six guest speakers, and each of them will provide their own special expertise to the table. They're gonna provide so much information and inspiration. So if you need that boost of support, something to really kickstart your new year, on the right path, feel free to check out my 30-day carnivore challenge. We kick off January 3rd, 2023. You get to submit your questions for each of the guests before their live Q&A, and you get access to all of their playbacks. So if you can't make it live to all six guest Q&As, you can keep the playbacks and replay them, watch them on your own time, and have access to them forever. You also get access to my fantastic team of coaches. I mentioned them quite a lot in this video because I truly learned so much from them and they are really such a big part of my life now because I host meetings with them every single week pretty much every other day I get to hang out with them learn from them see them help so many people in the steak and butter gang so you get access to a total of eight hours of live zoom calls every single week and within each week you get access to special themed meetings where you can submit your questions on fat loss and fitness carnivore health concerns Long haul healing, if you're a long haul healer, we have a meeting just on that. Carnivore 101, 
feasting and fasting, the famous 90 day fat loss program taught by coach Raymond and coach Emily. They will continue teaching all levels of their priming feasting and fasting program. And we recently added an integration of fat fasting for those who are a little bit more sensitive to fasting and not yet ready for water fasting. Fat fasting is a great alternative for those who want that deep healing, but also that body recomposition. So you get access to all of these amazing calls with me and my team of coaches plus the guest speakers and you get 24 7 chat boxes to stay accountable i think community and accountability is everything especially for the new year if you really want to start off 2023 on the best foot possible having a passionate and supportive community will make a world of a difference so for more details on the steak and butter gang and my 30-day carnivore challenges you can go to svgmeetup.com or click the link down below in the description box for more details and to directly sign up and now we come to the last thing that I will be waving farewell to, and that is spices and seasonings. Now, this is something that I have really experimented with so many times. I always feel like maybe I'm missing something or some type of observation every time, you know, I play around with salt, every time I play around with seasonings. But it just turns out that I am honestly very sensitive and reactive to all seasonings and even salt. Uh, if you guys have been following along my journey for a while now, you know just how great I feel without any salt. But every time I have salt, I just don't feel as good the next morning. I don't feel as energetic. I feel a lot drowsier. Even upon waking up, my eyelids feel heavier. I don't feel ready to just get out of bed and start my day. I feel a little bit lazier. It just doesn't translate into better energy, more endurance, like a lot of people who need their salt feel. So I think I may just be a special case. And the other thing that I definitely cannot have is seasonings. Every time I have seasonings, I get inflammation. And for me, that inflammation is translated into lower back pain. Lower back pain is something that I've always had. And I think it's because I'm a pianist. And ever since I was a child, I would be sitting for long periods of time, practicing at the piano, or now being in front of a screen and sitting for long periods of time. And this again ties back to my not being sedentary for long periods of time. I think that'll really help with my lower back discomfort. But every single time I have spices, I get discomfort the next day. So with seasonings, I never really actively season pepper or put stuff on my meals. I usually always enjoy my carnivore meals plain, no salt, no seasonings. And I know this really trips up a lot of carnivores uh, because you know, how can you enjoy meats plain? Isn't it boring and bland? For me, it honestly tastes like fireworks. It tastes delicious. I love the flavor of plain meats, especially when I cook it the way that I like it. So like seared steaks or deliciously baked flank and short ribs, soft boiled eggs, plus a side of delicious butter. Like that to me is all the flavor I need. So personally, I don't need to rely on salt and seasonings just for the flavor it brings. So because I don't actively season, I have to say that I cannot enjoy sugar-free sausages or any processed meats that is, although clean in ingredients, no sugar, no MSG, no preservatives, it still always is seasoned with either pepper, celery powder, garlic and onion powder. Those types of things really do flare me up and it always brings me back discomfort. It, I wouldn't say it's pain, it's just discomfort. It just feels a little bit tighter. I really have learned over and over again, just because I wanna indulge in some sugar-free sausages as a side, either I cook way too much of it for steak and butter guy and he has leftovers, so I just eat it up for himself. But every single time I have the tea tin sugar-free sausages or some type of sugar-free bacon, the next day, my back pays for it. I'm definitely gonna be a lot more conscious of things with seasonings, of packaged meats that has a lot of seasonings. Now, if you're new to carnivore, I do wanna stress since January is World Carnivore Month, please do not cut everything out. I think enjoying seasonings and your favorite sauces and marinades is gonna help so much in the long run with you firstly enjoying those carnivore meals, but also for you to be able to stick with it. You wanna stick with it through at least those first 30 days so that you 
you adapt. Because after you're past that adaptation phase, you start feeling the benefits and the wonderful impacts of this carnivore lifestyle. So if seasonings and sauces and marinades and dips help you with enjoying your meals, they help you with sticking to carnivore and looking forward to the next meal, please continue to add it in. I would say playing with seasonings and salt even is more for my experienced long-term adapted carnivores because it's just not something worth playing with when you're still adapting and completely new to this lifestyle. Something easy you can implement in your daily life is wearing blue blockers. Blue blockers protect our eyes from blue light. So me looking at a screen right now, filming or editing in front of a computer, even watching TV, my eyes could really benefit from that extra protection from that blue light. And that's what these blue blocker frames do. The one that I'm wearing in this video is from Bon Charge. It is my absolute favorite in design, in quality, in the way that it feels. I also have a yellow pair as well as their red pair. So this is just everyday computer, what they call computer blue blockers. This yellow one offers a level up in protection and the red one is the maximum protection. So I think it also makes a fabulous holiday gift for friends and family, but it's also a worthwhile investment for yourself. So if you guys wanna check out blue blockers, I have linked Bond Charge's website down below and you can get a 20% discount with my code SBGAL. Alrighty guys, so to sum up my three goals that I would like to set for myself in 2023, no more coffee, no more being sedentary all throughout the day. I'm gonna start strength training slash resistance training, basically whatever Max thinks is best for me, and being super cautious with spices, seasonings, and salt. If you guys have any specific requests for me documenting any of the things that I just listed, feel free to request it down below in the comment section. I also want to know what are your New Year's goals, New Year's resolutions, what do you wanna set for yourself and focus on, in the new year. I thank you so much for your support and for watching this video to the very end. I want to wish you all the happiest holiday. May you all have happiness, continued good health, prosperity, and joy in the new year. I will see you all in my next video. SVG out.